Hello, I'm Dr. Ann Ramsey, the founder of the United Community, which was located in uh, New York, was John Humphrey Noyce, and Noyce himself had grown up very much under the influ influence of Presbyterianism and was particularly influenced by Charles Finney. So John Humphrey Noyce decided that he wanted to attend seminary and study theology. So he started at Andover and then ended up at Yale Theological Studies. And in that capacity, his understanding of what it meant to be a Christian in the scriptures was widened. Now, keep in mind, this is in an era of extreme religious and social reform. You had labor rights movements. You had the early seeds of abolition and suffrage. You know, uh, this is just a, a decade or two before the Civil War. Uh, we're looking at Dorothea Dixon, prison reform, education reform, discussions about land distribution reform, and so on. And so in that sort of uh, political, social, and academic environment, uh, Noyes' understanding of Christianity widened such that he believed that many of the sociological practices like marriage were actually selfish and not Christian. A very pragmatic man, a man interested in affecting change, he came out of that experience and decided that he wanted a different and new approach to a sort of utopian society, if you will. Um, this is the time of the benevolent uh, empire, the beginning of uh, transcendentalism and the, the idea that somehow human beings can create a perfect society and attain a more perfect way of being. And for, hum for John Humphrey Noyes, this of course, this sort of benevolent empire or this utopian approach uh, was the Oneida community. Uh, it starts off with 87 members at its peak. It'll have over 300 members. They will organize, stratify, and structure everything from re religious practice to industry to gardening and farm, farm, excuse me, farming. Initially, they'll have their own printing. They'll do weekly uh, uh, pamphlets and, and newsletters. And of course, then they'll go into manufacturing. Today, when we think of Oneida, we think of silverware. It comes from this experience. Well, John Noyes, uh, as the leader of this community, uh, applying this idea of true Christian approach to all things, uh, disbanded with a lot of the normal social norms of the time. He believed in complex marriage. All men and all women were married to each other and sexual relationships there could be negotiated um, through multiple partners, uh, still one-on-one, -on -one, but one at a time. Um, the idea of sexual relationships would be negotiated by an older matron woman. And, um, and also older matron women could mentor young men uh, about sexual relations. The idea was not to get too attached to one person. Uh, children were kept with the mother till they could walk. And then they went to the, um, a sort of preschool, if you were, what they call the children's department to be communally raised. Uh, while he was in fact a leader, there was always a council of what they called mutual criticism, where if there was any questions, concerns, or problems, people spoke completely truthfully in such a way that they could call someone out if they were being prob problematic for the community, they could call into question any practice or concerns. Now, the reason that the Oneida movement and John Humphrey Noyes is important historically, and particularly in terms of American history, is because it was, again, the manifestation of this, of this belief that this is a promised land, that this new world and this new place offered new, new opportunity, and it, that it was divinely so, and that it could be attainable here. And in this situation, what we see is this sort of radical unfolding of all of these early ideas of these reform movements. We see the complete eradication of a typical patriarchal society. Women wore a sort of modified dress pants even in their community. A question of gender roles where work, leadership, sexual relations was not driven by only one gender or one sex. Sexual, the actual sexual relationship itself was inverted and, and completely different than what was the norm at the time. And so we see this as a perfect example of, of an extreme view of all of those things that were being called into question on the eve of the Civil War.